we have to specify uh, the scoop command. Either it can be uh, the scoop import, or it can be a scoop export, or you are running some uh, right some query on the data. Right. So what we have to do? So write the scoop space, then write the scoop command. After that, we have to write the connection string. So the connection string we write with the keyword connect. So whenever the connect, uh, this connection string always uses a JDBC uh, based communication method to connect to the database. So we start the connection string with the JDBC. After that, you have to write the which database you are trying to connect to. Suppose if you are trying to connect to the MySQL, then you have to write the JDBC colon MySQL. So now after that, specify in which machine, which host, right, in which node you have configured the MySQL. So you have to write the host name of the MySQL. So here in my case, uh, it's available in the local host. So I wrote connect space J connect space JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash local host. Then after after that, you have to write the test the table database name now now specify the table which table you are trying to connect to do so I have a table in my scale so I'm writing the table name so to perform the skew import so we write we run the command skew space uh, import then after that we are going to write the connection string so skew import connection string now this can through this connection string we are connecting to the MySQL uh, database, which is configured in the local host. So we have a, a direct uh, database is available. The test is the database name. So in this one, the test one is the table name. Fine. Okay. So what actually I'm going to do here, I'm trying to uh, retrieve the data from the RDBMS. Correct. So now. So this is uh, the RDBMS uh, which we are trying to connect to. So in this one, see I have uh, created a database. The database name is the test. Okay, will contain some tables. Uh, so one table name is test one. Now whenever you are trying to import the table, so we have to consider the two things: uh, whether the table is enabled by a primary key or not. Okay, so whenever uh, we are trying to import of, right, from the uh, any RDBMS, what we uh, require, the first thing is we need a username, comma, a password to connect to the DBMS. Okay, so we need to have a connection string. To connect to the RDBMS, so connection string means we have to get the connector, and we have to configure the connector to connect to, right? After that, uh, we should know uh, whether the table uh, we should know that whether table is enabled by primary key or not. And after that, now you should know where you want to import the data, right? You want to import the data, right? Uh, SDFS location where we are going to import the data. Uh, we should know the four things. Now, first, right? So the username and the password. So we have uh, any database will have this username, the privileges, right? So you have to, you need to have the connect to the privileges to connect to the database. If you are having that privileges, then only you are able to connect to the database. After that, so we are getting the connector and we are configuring the connector and we are using the JDBC method to uh, connect the database. Now, whenever we are trying to import the data from the database to the Hadoop cluster, so what I am doing, uh, so this is, uh, I am connecting uh, through connection connector, connecting to the database. Now, this SKU connector will create a directory. So what is the table name here? The table name is the uh, test one. So in SDFS, cube creates a directory with the table name. Right, now it, a directory is going to be created. The directory name is 
the test one under the SDFS. Now, whenever we are trying to import, we have to specify the how many number of mappers. How many number of mappers means suppose uh, if the table is enabled by the primary key. So we have a unique column is there, right? So that all the remaining uh, rows are identified with the primary column. So uh, if the table is enabled by the primary key, then we can able to run the multiple mappers. If the table is not enabled by the primary key, we have to run only one mapper. In the sense, so when uh, with the scoop import, now uh, I write here iPhone M. So the number of mappers I want to run. And then I'm writing one here. So if the table is is not enabled primary key we always have to run only one mapper because the table is not enabled so you want to run the 10 mappers so the indexing right how it will pick 1 2 thousand uh, 25 thousand suppose there are the 1 lakh rows are there right how many rows uh, 1 lakh rows are there in the database so now I want to run four mappers means what the first mapper will take what process 1 to 25,000 next 24,399 so second mapper will take 25,000 to uh, some 50 the next 25,000 third mapper will map the third uh, remaining 25 and the last 25,000 records are uh, processed by the four last uh, ma fourth mapper right so that is if we have the table is enabled by the primary key so that we can able to run the multiple mappers suppose uh, if we have the table is not enabled to primary key so we have uh, something like this so name okay and city so this is my mysql table so now i don't have the primary key here so now if i want to uh, assign like 1 to 25000 for one mapper 25000 to next is uh, 25000 records are second mapper so uh, that kind of indexing is not possible if the table is not enabled by the primary key. So as a rule of thumb, if the table is not enabled by the primary key, simple, we always have to give only one mapper. So if the table is enabled by the primary key, then we can able to run the multiple mappers. That is now the same skew import. Right? We specify the number of mappers are 4. That is, here one mapper is trying to retrieve all 1 lakh records. So that means it takes some more time to process it. But here I am running 4 mappers. So 4 mappers simultaneously, parallelly trying to retrieve all the 1000 records. So first mapper will take process first 25,000. Second mapper will process next 25,000 records. And third mapper will process next 25,000 records. And the last mapper will uh, mapper will process last 25,000. Now, all these four mappers are working parallelly. So, in the same time, four mappers are working. So, it, at the same time, now it will retrieve one lakh rows. Okay. So, this is the difference. If it is a one mapper is there. So, what it will now? Uh, it will create uh, the table name, the test under the SDFS. It will create a file. The file which we call it as a part file. So, one mapper is there. So it create one part file. So this one part file contains all the rows. Suppose if the table is enabled by the primary key, so then I am running how many part file mappers? Four mappers. So each mapper will generate one part file. So the mapper one will generate part iPhone M iPhone. So five zeros. And next mapper will generate another part file uh, with some twenty five thousand rows. So like this, uh, we'll have mapper 2 and mapper 3. So four mappers will work. So we'll retrieve the four, we'll generate the four part files now. So now this part file will contain 25,000 records. This part file will contain 25,000 records. So this will next 25, right? So what you have to remember, if the table is enabled by the primary key, uh, we have to run on enabled by the primary key we can able to run the multiple mappers if it is not enabled by the primary key we have to run only 
one mapper so we know that right we have studied in uh, if one person can able to do the work in 10 days 10 people can do the same work in a one day because it's a parallel process yes I agree. Um, you know yes yeah. right now so this name uh, we have to specify a parameter uh, target iphone dar Right, and then specify the location in SDFS where you want to import the record. So I want to import this record to SDFS directory user cloudera and the directory name Tahir. So now with this command, so I specified the four mappers. Uh, we'll connect to the database. We'll generate four part files under the directory Tahir. Right, we'll see that. Let me execute this command uh, here. If I you then root, root. right uh, I'm uh, username is a root to connect to my skin if and P right uh, so right use the test show databases right I'm connecting to the database test use the test now uh, show tables to see the tables in the database right so you can see uh, test database test table is there you can write select star from test okay so this is uh, I'll use for the MySQL this terminal Okay, so I, I'm taking another terminal for the SDFS. Right, so for the SKU. Okay, so now which directory I want to import? I want to import uh, the table test into the SDFS. So before that, uh, Whenever you are trying to import uh, into import to the SDFS, uh, SKU try to create a directory in SDFS. So if the test directory is already there in the SDFS, it will throw the error. So that we should we should uh, we should make sure that uh, the test uh, the directory uh, it should not exist in the SDFS, right? So the table name is a test. So let me delete uh, if we have any directory is there with the name test in SDFS. Right, so there is no directory test available in SDFS. Right, now clear the screen. So uh, I'm writing a skew command to perform the import. So write skew space import, then write the connection string. JDBC colon my SQL colon slash slash localhost. And the database name is test. Okay. Now see here. Uh, the here the, what are the fields we are having? We are having the two fields. One is the test ID and the test name. So if you see the description, the uh, SE test, the table is not enabled by the primary key, right? So this table is not enabled by the primary key. So that I need to run only one mapper. So first uh, I try to run with the multiple mappers test, and then the table name is is the test okay so I'm giving four mappers now okay so what is saying that so it is an error and it is saying that uh, error during the import so there is no primary key found for the table test so please specify one with uh, or use the split by uh, with iPhone M1 so it is saying that either uh, specify how you want to split the table uh, to perform the uh, import with the multiple mappers or use iPhone M1 to perform the import right so now I'll do uh, I'll write one mapper press enter 
so it will create a directory with the name test and the test directory so it will generate a one part file which contains all the rows which will import all the rows to that particular file Okay, so completed. Retrieved six records. So where where these six records are available? So SKU will create a directory with the table name. So what is the table name? Test. So if you write Hadoop space fs ls test. Now uh, it in the test directory we'll get one part file, right? So this is a part file. Now you can see Hadoop space fs fn cat. Then write test by part hyphen m hyphen 0000 okay so now whatever the data which we are having in this table are imported to the sdfs directory right so this is how to import from mysql to sdfs okay fine but see here uh, where these records are imported uh, by default uh, uh, directory the test so I just want to import uh, this to a specific directory in SDF, uh, uh, SDFS. So my intention is I have a directory, uh, Tahir is available, and I want to import these files to the Tahir directory. Okay, so now see uh, if it Tahir, we have a directory is available in SDFS. So I want to import these records from MySQL to the Tahir directory SDFS. So for this, uh, we have to write one parameter target DAR. So we have to specify the target space DAR. So my my directory is under user cloud era. So there is a directory Tahir. So for, I want to import the records to your Tahir directory. Right, so we got an error. So let me trace what is the error it is. Right, uh, it says that file already exists exception. Right, so we have test is there in the Tahir directory. Okay, right, so it will create a directory. So it uh, it created Tahir 1, I wrote. So it will create a directory Tahir 1 and it will import the records to the Tahir 1 directory. Okay, so now in SDFS, a directory is going to be created with the name Tahir1. Under the directory Tahir1, it will import the, uh, it will write all the MySQL table rows into Tahir directory under the part file. Okay, retrieved six records. Now we can check in SDFS if you write Hadoop space FSFN less Tahir1. Okay, so we got a one part file. So it will be written into this part file. Okay, right. So now uh, what I want to do is I don't want to import uh, all the rows. I want to uh, find out, uh, I want to import the rows only ID is greater than 5 okay I want to write a condition where I want to import the records on specific condition right so what I'll do the same thing we can write like this so write the scoop import uh, write the connection string and the table name uh, write number of mappers and where you want to write in SDFS tie directly now but uh, which rows you want to import 
okay then we have to specify a where class so i'm writing okay so my condition is where right what is the condition uh, we have the test id is there so the test id greater than 3 i want to import all the rows where the id is greater than 3 so i am writing the parameter with a where condition so then write where test id is greater than 3 ok so i want to import this to the directory tahi Okay, now see it retrieved the two records. So where we have imported the records, now we'll see the uh, query again. So I wrote uh, skew connection string. After that, I specify the condition. I want to import the rows where the test ID is greater than three. So I wrote a where parameter and the condition. So I wrote this to the directory tahir. So now you can check here. Hadoop uh, fs ls uh, to the directory tahir2 ok so we have a part file uh, that's uh, with the command cat then write tahir so the file name part hyphen m hyphen 00000. Now this part file contains all the records uh, which uh, ID is greater than 3. That is, uh, we have the 5 is semi, 6 is 3. Right? So this part file contains only the rows where ID is greater than 3. Press enter. Okay. So now we have 5 is semi and 6 is C. So in this way we can write uh, right, imports based upon the specific condition. Right. And then so whenever we are trying to import the data from the RDBMS to SDFS. Now the people will talk about the security. Right. Because when once the data is available into the RDBMS the data is secured and the users own, uh, with the valid privileges can able to see the data from the table. So you have to connect to the MySQL, then you have to run a query to see the data. But when you get the data into the Hadoop cluster, the data is available in SDFS. So once the data is available in SDFS, now the data is open and we can able to see the data. So now what I want to do is I want to encrypt the data. I don't want others to see the data. I want to convert the data into some ununderstandable format. So this encrypted data in Hadoop, we call it as a sequential files. Okay, so we call it as a sequential files. So the sequential files means the files which are encrypted. So now what I want to do is whenever I am trying to import the data to the SDFS uh, during the import while writing the data into SDFS, I want to convert the data into some ununderstandable format. So then uh, we can able to import the data into sequential file. So by default, whenever you are trying to import the data from this cube, SKU will import in the three different ways. Right? Uh, the SKU import as a text file. So every import by default is a text file. So that's we are, uh, whatever the import we did is uh, imported as a text file. And suppose if you want to import as a sequential file, right? we can able to import as sequential file. So when you import as a sequential file, so it will be uh, some ununderstandable format so that nobody can able to read the data. So we write the parameter uh, simple just as sequence file.
right so that now uh, this import now it converts into some understandable format suppose i want to convert the data into some json format or i want to convert the data into some avro format so we have an option is there so then scoop import we have to write as avro data okay so this is one data format which is more compatible and similar like json file so we always whenever trying to import the data into the sdfs by default every scoop import will import it as a text file so if you want to encrypt the data while writing into the sdfs we have to import it as a sequential file if you want to write the data as some json data or some particular avro kind of data format where which is best useful for the serialization so that we we call it as a avro data file now we can able to import the data as avro data file so we we can able to import the data into three different formats uh, let me run this now i'll run the same import and i want to make this as some uh, encryption sequential file so just write scoop import right so where i want to write i want to write this to the directory tahis3 and while writing i want to convert this as some encrypted so just write as sequence file okay i find i find then write as sequential file right then specify the number of mappers press enter now it converts it into some understandable format so if you try to see the file with a cat command we can't able to see that okay so what it did now uh, the import is completed and it retrieve the two records where it retrieve it retrieve two records to the directory right uh, we have given tahit 3 right okay uh, let me check in the tahit 3 directory so ls entered okay so i am going to run with a cat then write part file see then what i for m i for 0000 okay see now can able to see uh, but we can't able to understand anything right so this is a sequential format which is something like an understandable format okay so just what we have to do we have to add one parameter at end of the skip command that is as sequence file okay suppose if you want to import as an avro data format so then uh, we write one something uh, as sequence file so it's of the sequence file uh, i want to make this as avro format so just write as avro data file and then write the number of mappers 1 okay it says that tahir 3 is already exists so we'll create another directory with the name tahir 4 Now this import is a Avro uh, kind of data format, so it imports the data into Avro data format. Avro files will have an extension .avsc, so it will create a part file with the extension .avsc. Now uh, which will have the data into something like JSON data.
okay retrieve two records now we'll see uh, So in the directory Tahir 4, press enter. Now it will generate a part file with a .avac, .avro extension, .avro. Okay. So if you try to print, uh, display the content, so I'm writing Tahir 4, then part hyphen m hyphen 0000.avro. Okay, uh, it's a uh, name, test ID, type some, Avro data format, it imported the records. Right, uh, so to get the scoop, just write scoop space import, then write help. Okay, so it will uh, it will give you the different parameters we can specify with the skip import command. Okay, so this is we have used Avro data file which imports into the Avro data format. So this parquet is a one data format where we are going to import the data into parquet format. If you want to import as a sequence file, so we can able to import the data into sequence file. Sequence files are the encrypted files. So by default every skip import is a plain text file so we can just write as text file uh, to import as a text file so by default it's a text file so we can skip uh, writing this one okay so now So just uh, write skew, then we the complete syntax uh, will write like this skew import, then uh, write the connection string. So to continue in the line, uh, we can type the forward slash, right? So import, sorry, connect, then write the connection string JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash localhost the test. Right. then what is the table name test and then if you want to write the username uh, right so if you have already doesn't have the not configure the credentials now in the skip import command we can specify the username so the username is the root uh, and then write the password okay so the connecting to the password is some password we'll write so generally, I don't want to write the password here, right? So I want manually uh, user to write the enter the password. So if you write iPhone P, right? If you write iPhone P, then this will ask the user uh, to enter the password. So write the username. Then in the next parameter, instead of writing the password, just write iPhone P so that it will ask the user to enter the password, right? So then after that. So here specify the number of mappers, right, username and the password. So then specify where you want to import SGFS by the target DIF. So just try to create a directory, a new directory name. So it does a skip, a skip import is always try to create a directory. So if you give the existing directory, it will throw the error. So create it, uh, then write the new directory name. So now uh, it will import the records to this new directory. So when you are importing this to new directory, so how you want to import? You want to import as a text file, uh, no need to write anything. So if you want to import as a sequence file, then you have to write as sequence file. This write as sequence file, fine. Suppose if you want to import only the specific records on some condition, then so here after the write the table uh, test, then specify uh, how you want to import that, right? So now you can able to write the where condition. So write a where class and then uh, write here uh, what is the condition you want to write. Where, so 
invite test ID is greater than 3 just write this in the double quotes right so then write the number of mappers username password and the target directory and how you want to import right so this will be the complete import to SDFS directory uh, with a sequence import